Today, I will be ranking every single NVIDIA graphics card that's relevant and you can buy right now brand new. I will go through every price point and monitor resolution, including 1080p, 1440p and 4K GPUs. So by the end of this video, you will know which graphics cards from NVIDIA you should avoid and which ones are the perfect ones for your budget and needs. The best NVIDIA graphics cards for every budget will be down below in the video description with the latest pricing and availability in your region. My name is Valentino, that being said, let's start. So with the first graphics card, we have the RTX 3050 6 GB version. Now, this one is the only graphics card that I would put in the avoid tier. The reason why I'm gonna put it in the avoid tier is because it has 6 gigs of VRAM. And honestly, in 2025, you definitely do not want a graphics card with less than 8 gigs of VRAM. So if you want to play anything other than games like Valorant or Fortnite, you will be pretty much limited and you will have to play at low settings. And even then, this graphics card is not perfect when it comes to performance at 1080p. So if you're looking for a 1080p graphics card, do not get the 3050 6GB version if you want an NVIDIA GPU. Now, another thing is the price. This one right now goes for 179 bucks by the time of filming, which is still a high price for a graphics card with 6 gigs of VRAM. Now, you can also get the same RTX 3050 with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, and slightly better performance. That's going to be a better option, but still not ideal. I'm going to put it in the trash tier, just because if you have around 200 USD to spend and you really, really want to go Nvidia, you are not willing to go AMD or Intel, well, the 3050 AGI version is going to be your best option, especially compared to the 6 GB version. But don't get it twisted, this graphics card is still trash. It's not perfect when it comes to performance. It's okay for 1080p resolution gaming, but do not expect high FPS on high to ultra settings in high demanding games. This GPU will only be okay for very easy to run games, but at least you won't be as limited when it comes to higher demanding games as the 3050 with 6 gigabytes. Now the next one is actually an interesting one because it's the RTX 3060 with 12 gigs of VRAM. This is Nvidia's cheapest graphics card with 12 gigabytes. Now this graphics card is actually quite decent. However, right now it's going for 299, which in my opinion is way too much for this GPU. Not because of its VRAM, but because of its performance. It's not terrible by all means, but for the same price, you can get other graphics cards that I'm going to be talking about right now, which are going to give you faster performance. So for that reason, it's going to be a good GPU, just bad value. If you could get this graphics card for 199, then I do think that it would be a no-brainer if you're looking for a budget GPU, because you would be getting very decent 1080p gaming performance, even in high demanding games and you would be getting 12 gigs of VRAM so no limitation when it comes to VRAM. Now with the next one we have the latest Nvidia GPU release in the RTX 5060. Now the 5060 is actually a pretty good graphics card but once again it has 8 gigs of VRAM that's going to limit you in the most high demanding titles. And the worst part is that if you want to go AMD for example, well their most new GPU in the 9060 XT also has 8 gigs of VRAM for the same price. I do think that these graphics cards should not exist at this price point. In terms of performance, again the 5060 is pretty solid and if you want to play at 1080p and your games do not require more than 8 gigs of VRAM, you will be achieving very high frame rates even in high demanding titles if you're not going over those 8 gigs of VRAM while gaming. So I mean in terms of performance is really good but it could be much better. For that reason, I'm going to put it in the OK tier. But again, I wouldn't recommend it for most people unless the games that you play do not require more than 8 gigs of VRAM. But even then, I would be looking at something like the Intel ARC B580, which goes for around the same price. And yes, it's going to be slightly slower, but you get more VRAM. So you're not going to have that VRAM limitation. Now with the next one, we have the RTX 5060 Ti 8 gigabyte version. This is one of the worst graphics cards in my opinion in the entire market because of the fact that the 5060 Ti is actually very fast but here you are basically limited by VRAM. It's almost as if Nvidia wanted to create this graphics card and then the 5060 Ti 16GB version for not that much more that way you think okay it's not that much more to get 16 gigs of VRAM then I will go with this one and you end up buying the 5060 Ti 16GB version. That seems like their marketing strategy and honestly if that's the case it's working because I would never recommend you buying the 5060 Ti 8GB version. You don't want to spend 380 bucks on a graphics card with 8 gigs of VRAM in 2025. Now, in terms of performance, it's pretty solid for those games that don't require more than 8 gigs. However, I am going to put it in the trash tier just because it's way too expensive for an 8 gigs of VRAM GPU. The max price I would put for a graphics card with 8 gigabytes in 2025 is 250 bucks. No more than that. Then we have the 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte version. Now, this one 
is completely different. In my opinion, this graphics card is actually good value because right now you can get it for its MSRP. This is one of the only GPUs in the market at the moment that you can get at its MSRP again. So the 5060 Ti 16GB version for 429 is a pretty sweet deal, especially compared to other graphics cards in the market that are way more expensive. You have no VRAM limitations and you get really good gaming performance at 1080p, high ultra settings and high demanding titles, and you can also get very fast performance when it comes to 1440p resolution. So if you want to play high demanding games at 1440p or 1080p and you want a good value graphics card, at the moment for 430 I do think that this is going to be one of the best value GPUs out there, especially from Nvidia. For that reason, I'm going to put it in the good value tier. I do really believe that this is good value. And again, this is compared to other GPUs in the market, of course. I would love this 5060 Ti 16GB version to be under 400 USD to be even better value, but still, I'm going to put it in the good value tier. Now, then we have the RTX 5070. This graphics card, by the time of filming, is going for its MSRP of 550 bucks. This is another one of those graphics cards who are rarely at its MSRP, but as of right now, you can get the 5070 for 550. Now, I don't think this GPU is as good as the 5060 Ti in terms of value because you get 12 gigs of VRAM and you spend 120 bucks more for not that much more performance. I mean, yes, it's going to be more powerful, don't get me wrong, the 5070 will be faster than the 5060 Ti, but you get less VRAM and you have to spend 120 bucks more. So, for that reason, I'm going to put it in the OK tier. It's very fast when it comes to performance. I mean, if you're looking for a 1440p graphics card and you want to play high demanding games on high settings, this GPU will be perfect and you will be achieving very high frame rates. But if you're looking to play games that require more than 12 gigs of VRAM, or if you want to play at 4K resolution, you might be VRAM limited depending on the game. Now, for most games, 12 gigs of VRAM will be totally fine, especially for 1440p. But of course, I would love to see 16 gigs of VRAM on this graphics card for it to be really good value. Now, then we have the RTX 5070 Ti. I really like this graphics card because of its performance. It's very fast. Here we are getting into the 4K territory. I mean, you can play at 1440p high to ultra settings in every game with the 5070 Ti. It's very top tier for 1440p, but you can also use it for 4K and not spend over a thousand dollars like you would with the RTX 5080. So, in my opinion, this is going to be the best of the best. Unfortunately, the price is not ideal. It's not back to its MSRP. Right now it goes for 840 bucks, so it could be better. And I've seen this graphics card go for 799. So if you can find it at its MSRP, I do think that it's going to be a pretty sweet deal. However, for 840 bucks, it might be quite expensive, but I do think that it's worth it because you get 60 gigs of VRAM and you get very fast performance. Now, yes, the 5070 is quite cheaper and it offers around 30% lower performance than the 5070i. So by definition, the 5070 might be better when it comes to pure price of performance. But again, you have to keep in mind that the 5070i has 16 gigs of VRAM, and since it's about 30% faster, you are getting into the high-end graphics cards territory. And that's why, in my opinion, this is going into the best of the best. But again, if you can find it for around 750 or 800 USD, that's going to be a pretty sweet deal. Now, with the next one, we have this one right here in the RTX 5080. The 5080, in my opinion, is a great graphics card. It's one of the best ones. I mean, it's very high end, but I would not recommend it buying it for most people. And the reason why it's because it's way too expensive. I mean, the MSRP of this graphics card was supposed to be a thousand USD and right now it's going for 1400. So that's $400 over MSRP. And the craziest part about this is that the 5070 Ti is actually not that much more slower than the 5080. They are actually quite similar. Yes, the 5080 is slightly faster, but not by a big margin. So spending around 600 USD more to get slightly faster performance doesn't sound like a good deal to me. So yes, it's a very high-end graphics card for 4K. You can play any game that you want, but I will put it in the good GPU VAT value tier. I would love to see the 5080 for a thousand USD because otherwise it's not worth it. I would never recommend you spending that much more money compared to the 5070 Ti unless you just really don't care about money. But if you don't care about money, I will get the RTX 5090, which as of right now is going for 2760 bucks. Now it's getting closer and closer to its MSRP of 2000 bucks. At one point, the 5090 was selling for around $5,000. So, I mean, we are going in the right direction, but still, I would only recommend you buying the 5090 if you don't care about money. The thing is, the 5090 is not meant for people who want the best price to performance GPU. So, for its purpose, it's going into my best of the best tier. Again, 
The only reason why it's only based off the best, well, first of all, it's the fastest graphics card in the market and you will be achieving very high frame rate in any resolution. And it's also the fastest one for productivity work and content creation. So no matter what you do, the 5090 will be the best graphics card. But secondly, because once again, the purpose of this graphics card is for people who don't give a fuck about money. So if you care about money, then this graphics card was not meant for you in the first place. So let me know how I did here and let me know if you would have done something differently. I want to know in the comment section. And if you want to get a new gaming PC with one of these graphics cards, I do recommend you watching my video on the best pre-built gaming PCs. You will find that one in the top right corner of the screen for the best price performance gaming PCs for your budget and needs. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.